The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo. I'm Pappy. You can have a father who lives with you, who every day eats at the table and watches TV in the living room, and snores through the whole night and grunts about the bills or the weather or your brother's straight A's. You can have a father who works for Transit Authority and reads a listine diario and calls back to the island every couple of months to speak to primo so-and-so. You can have a father who, if people asked, you had to say, lived with you. You have to say is around. But even as he brushes by you on the way to the bathroom, he could be gone as anybody. Just because your father's present doesn't mean he isn't absent. All over a damn wafer. As repentance for not participating in communion last time, Mommy makes me go to evening mass with her every evening this week, even the days that aren't confirmation class. When communion time comes, I stand in line with everyone else, and when Father Sean places the Eucharist onto my tongue, I walk away, kneel in my pew, and spit the wafer into my palm when I'm pretending to pray. I can feel the hot eyes of the Jesus statue watching me hide the wafer beneath the bench, where his holy body will now feed the mice. Monday, September 17th, The Flyer, Calling All Poets. The poster is printed on regular white computer paper, The Bare Basics. Spoken Word Poetry Club, Calling All Poets, Rappers, and Writers, Tuesdays, After School, See Miss Galliano in room 302 for details. It's layered behind other more colorful and bigger lettered announcements, but it still makes me stop halfway down the staircase as kids late to class try their best to accidentally make me topple down the stairs. But I'm rooted to the spot, a new awareness buzzing over the noise. This poster feels personal, like an engraved invitation mailed directly to me. After the buzz dies down, I crumple the flyer in my backpack, balled and zipped up tight, Tuesdays I have confirmation class. Not a chance mommy's going to let me out of that. Not a chance I want anyone hearing my work. Something in my chest flutters like a bird whose wings are being gripped still by the firmest fingers. Tuesday, September 18th. I'm on. After two weeks of bio review, safety lessons, and blah, 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 we're finally starting real work. A boy, Amon, is assigned as my lab partner. I saw him around last year, but this is our first class together. He shifts at the two-person desk we share, and his forearm touches mine. After a moment, I shift on purpose, liking how my arm brushes against his. I pull away quickly. The last thing I need is for someone to see me trying to holla at a dude in the middle of class. Then I'll be known. Then I'll really be known as fast. But it's like his forearm brush changed everything. Now I notice I'm taller than him by a couple of inches. How full his mouth is. He has a couple of chin hairs. How quiet he is. How he peeks at me from under his lashes. Near the end of class, as we both stare at the board, I let my arm rest against his. It seems safe. Our silence. Whispering with Caridad later that day. X, there's this boy at school. C, this is why your mom should have sent you with me to St. John's. X, are you kidding? Half those girls end up pregnant before graduating. C, no exageres, tío. We're going to get in trouble. We're supposed to be annotating this verse. X, you and I can break this verse down in our sleep. It's not wrong to think a boy's fine, you know. C, it's wrong to lust, tío. You know what to sin. X, we're humans, not robots. Even our parents lusted once. C, that's different. They were married. X, you don't think they lusted before the aisle? Girl, bye. Girl, bye. Anyways, there's a boy at school. He's cute. His arm is warm. C, I don't even want to know what you mean by that. Is that code for something? Stop being fresh. X, Cotty Dad, you're always trying to protect me from my dirty mind of warm arms. C, Sometimes I think I'm the only one trying to protect you from yourself. What twin be knowing? As I'm getting ready for sleep, I'm surprised to see the crumpled poetry club flyer neatly unfolded and on my bed. It must have fallen out of my bag. Without looking up from the computer screen, twin says in barely a whisper, This world's been waiting for your genius a long time. 
My brother is no psychic, no prophet, but it makes me smile, this secret hope we share. We're both good enough for each other and maybe the world, too. When he goes to brush his teeth, I tear the flare into pieces before Mommy can find it. Tuesdays, for the foreseeable future, belong to church, and any genius I might have belongs only to me. <sighs> Sharing. Although Twin and I are super different, people find it strange how much we share. We share the same womb, same cradle, and our whole lives the same room. Mommy wanted to find a bigger apartment, told Poppy we should move to Queens or somewhere far from Harlem where we could each have our own room. But apparently, although Poppy had changed, he still stood unmoved, said everything we could want was here, and sharing a room wouldn't kill us. And it hasn't, except... I once heard a rumor that goldfish have an evolutionary gene where they'll only develop as big as the tank they're put into. They need space to stretch, and I wonder if Twin and I are keeping each other small, taking up the space that would have let the other grow. Questions from Miss Galliano. I'm one of the first students in English class the next day, and although I promised myself I would keep my lips stapled together when Miss Galliano asks me how I'm doing, the words trip and twist their ankles, trying to rush out my mouth. She run the poetry club, right? She doesn't laugh, cocks her head, and nods. Yes, we just started it this year. Spoken word poetry club. And my face must have been all kinds of screwed up confused because she tries to explain how spoken word is performed poetry. But it all sounds the same to me, except the one is memorized. It might be easier if I showed you. I'll pull a clip up as today's intro to class. Are you thinking of joining the club? I shake my head no. She gives me that look again. When someone who doesn't know you is sizing you up like you're a broken clock and they're trying to translate the ticks. Spoken word. When class starts, Miss Galliano projects a video. A woman on stage, her voice quiet, then louder and faster, like an express train picking up speed. Both talk about being black, about being a woman, about how beauty standards make it seem she isn't pr pretty. I don't breathe for the entire three minutes while I watch her hands and face, feeling like she's talking directly to me. She's saying the thoughts I didn't know anyone else had. We're different, this poet and I, in looks and body and background, but I don't feel so different when I listen to her. I feel heard. When the video finishes, my classmates who are rarely excited by anything clap softly, and although the poet isn't in the room, it feels right to acknowledge her this way. Even if it's only polite applause, my own hands move against each other. Miss Galliano asks about the themes and presentation style, but instead of raising my hand, I press it against my heart and will the chills in my arms to smooth out. It was just a poem, Siomara, I think, but it felt more like a gift. Wait, is this what Miss Galliano thinks I'm going to do in her poetry club? She mentioned competition, and I know slam is just that, but she can't think that I who sits silently in a classroom, who only speaks to get someone off my back, who ever get on stage and say any of the things I've written out loud to anybody else. She must be out her damn mind. Holding a poem in the body. The night after my shower, instead of staring at the parts of myself, I want a puzzle piece into something else. I watch my mouth memorize one of my poems. Even though I don't ever plan on letting anyone hear it, I think about that poetry video from class. Let the words shape themselves hard on my tongue. Let my hands pretend to be punctuation marks that slash and point and press in on each other. Let my body finally take up all the space at once. I toss my head and script my face and grip my teeth and smile and make a fist in every one of my libs as an actor trying to take center stage. And then Mommy knocks on the door and asks me what I'm here reciting. I better not be more rap lyrics and I respond verses. I'm memorizing verses. I know she thinks I mean Bible ones. I hide my notebook in my towel before heading to my room. Comfort myself with the fact that I didn't actually lie. J. Cole, this is Kendrick Malar Lamar. Now that we're doing real labs, Aman and I are forced to speak. Mostly we mumble under our breath about measurements and beakers, but I can't forget what I told Crowdy Dad when we get to know him. Ask him if he has the new J. Cole album, Shuffle Papers, as I wait for him to answer. Aman signs his name beneath mine on the lab report. The bell rings, but neither of us moves. Aman straightens, and for the first time, his eyes lock onto mine. Yeah, I got Cole, but I'd rather the Kendrick Lamar. We should listen to his new album together sometime. Asylum. When my family first got a computer, Twin and I were about nine, and while Twin used it to look up astronomy discoveries or the latest anime movies, I used it to stream music. 
flipping the screen from music videos to Khan Academy tutorials whenever mommy walked into the room. I fell in love with Nicki Minaj, with J. Cole, with Drake, and Kanye, with old school rappers like Jay-Z and Nas and Eve. Every day I searched for new songs and it was like applying for asylum. I just needed someone to help me escape from all the silence. I just needed people saying words about all the things that hurt them. Maybe this is why Poppy stopped listening to music, because it can make your body want to rebel, to speak up. And even that young, I learned music can become a bridge between you and a total stranger. What I tell him on, maybe. I'll let you know. Dreaming of him tonight. A boy's face in my hands, but he's nearly a man. Memories of mommy's words almost lash my fingers away, but still I brush upward against the grain and prickle and bristle of a light beard at his jaw. His cheekbones rise like a sun, a large canvas of a forehead, a nose that takes space. This is a face that doesn't apologize for, for itself. The boy moves his body closer to mine, and I can feel his hands drop down from my waist to my hips, then brushing up toward these boobs I hate, but I now push them like an offering. His hands move so close, our faces move closer, and then my phone alarm rings, waking me up to school. In my dreams, his is a mouth that knows more than curses and prayer, more than bread and wine, more than water, more than blood, more. Thursday, September 20th. The thing about dreams. When I get to school, I know I won't be able to look a man in the face. You can't dream about touching a boy and then look, look at him in real life and not think he's going to see that dream like a face full of makeup blushing up your cheeks. But even though I'm nervous when I get to bio, the moment I sit next to him, I calm down. Like my dream has given me an inside knowledge that takes away my nerves. I'd love to listen to Kendrick. Maybe we could do it tomorrow? Thursday, September 20th, the thing about dreams. When I get to school, I know I won't be able to look him on in the face. You can't dream about touching a boy and then look at him in real life and not think he's going to see that dream like a face full of makeup. Oh, sorry, I already read this. Date. This doesn't count as a date or even anything sinful. Just two classmates meeting up after school to listen to music. So I try not to freak out when Aman agrees to our non-date. Mommy's dating rules. Rule one, I can't date. Rule two, at least until I'm married. Rule three, see rules one and two. Clarification on dating rules. Thing is, my old school Dominican parents do not play. Well, mostly mommy. I'm not sure Poppy has any strong opinions, or at least none he's ever said. But mommy's been telling me early as I remember I can't have a boyfriend until I'm done with college. Even then, she got strict rules on what kind of boy he better be. And mommy's words have always been scripture set in stone, so I already know going to a park alone with a mom might as well be the eighth deadly sin. But I can't wait to do it anyway. Friday, September 21st, feeling myself. All last night I held the secret of meeting Amon like a candle that could too easily be blown out. At any, t any time Mommy said my name or Twin looked in my direction, I waited for them to ask what I was hiding. This morning I ironed my shirt, for sure sign I'm scheming, since I hate to iron. No one th says anything about the shirt, or my new shea butter scented lip balm. When I slide my jeans up to my hips and shimmy into them, my legs feel powerful beneath my hands. And I smile over my shoulder at my bubble butt in the mirror.